Some might say Stan Galicki is a contradiction in terms. A former petroleum geologist committed to fuel-efficient transportation. Actually, right now I drive a scooter. <laughs> a professor of geology at Millsaps College who appreciates better than most the critical role fossil fuels will continue to play in all our lives. Society goes through wake-up calls. We have them all the time. You know, Three Mile Island and, 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 and in Russia, Chernobyl. You know, these accidents, they happen. And, and they, they, they have a way of stimulating new technology. Many people understand that, that we need alternative fuels, but the problem is, um, right now, there is nothing that can take the place of petroleum. Think of a way you know, to do without plastics. Think of a way to do without the medicines that are, that are generated from petroleum. So it's, it's really a phenomenal fluid. While Galicki understands the needs, he also knows the risk involved with deep sea oil exploration. It's hard for me to sit here in Jackson, Mississippi. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a shrimper, I'm not an oyster fisherman, I don't live in, in Venice, Louisiana, you know, I'm not down there. But believe me, BP did not want this to happen. And no oil company, you know, nobody on earth wanted to see this happen. But we have to remember that, that they're out there doing this because society is demanding those hydrocarbons. And they are operating at the limits of technology. You know, there are wells that are actually being drilled in 9,000 feet of water. You know, this happened at half that depth, and we, we barely have the technology to contain this thing. Galicki's pragmatic view is shared by many directly affected by the BP oil spill. I feel like I've lost everything that I've worked to, to get my whole life. I wanted to fish for living my whole entire life. This looked like it was going to be a pre-Katrina year for charters and everything has went to nothing. I want the, the drilling to, to continue. I love the oil business. The oil business and chartering go hand in hand. They've always have. That's the reason why we have a business. But what they, what, what they did is wrong. You, know, you, you can't have 800 and something fines against you and then the next company only has six. You know, ding, 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 red flag. For years, the geology department at Millsamps has been a test site for a wide variety of substances and products designed to absorb oil. That work continues, even as oil washes ashore on Mississippi beaches. We've tested shredded diapers, the plastic from diapers that have been left over. We've tested things that look like pom-poms. I mean, any type of plastic uh, will, will, you know, collect oil. But on the organic side, we've tested uh, canaf, which is a plant. Uh, that is very porous and, and can soak up oil. We've tested peat, human hair, uh, walnut shells, clay, uh, diatomaceous earth, any, anything that will soak up oil. We have basically tested here at Millsaps and they all have advantages and disadvantages. You know, if, if, you know, some of the best ones are extremely costly. Some of the, the cheapest ones and most readily available maybe don't have the sorbency that the, the engineered ones do. And so it depends on what you're trying to do and, and how it works, but the name of the game is to get the oil off the water, get the oil out of the water. And uh, it's not easy, you know, it's not an easy proposition in any case, especially when you're talking about, I think there's 500-something miles of coastline now that is now, you know, in danger. And that's a tremendous amount of sorbents. Uh, there was a company that wanted me to test their new booms that they just produced, and they can manufacture at least before this happened, they were manufacturing 15 booms a day. They were stepping up production eightfold to try to meet this demand and working around the clock and adding lines to produce more booms. And so it's, it, you know, this, this will go on for, for years, this cleanup. In future reports, we'll look at how oil forms, how it's found, and how it's extracted. For Newsocracy, I'm Jim Albritton.